Here we go. So we are now recording. We're now recording. Welcome. This is our first Black. Hey. Congratulations. Oh, Welcome to Black. I got all these things popping up by me. Those are props. They used to be called fields. People didn't like fields. <laughs> so now they're props. And so um, they are not cumulative like on Periscope. They are only for a given blab and it's just a, for people to let you know that they like what you're saying they're happy to see you or you know they like your hair today or whatever <laughs> yes we also have some <laughs> and i gotta get some water okay and so we have a maximum of four people allowed on a blab is that right yeah and you, they can drop in and out so people can join but you can you can sort of kick them if you want to scott Okay, and then I see there's there's a little uh, icon by your name and Eileen's name, and I clicked one went gold, one went green. Yeah, those are the color. Each person has their color. Uh, will be the blue, the gold, the green, and red. So if you had a fourth person in there, that would be red. So therefore, if you notice over in the comments where I typed the link to my cheat sheet, oh, yeah. notice it's gold, and it also has the G because I'm a guest. And we just lost Mark. He'll be back. Eileen knows more about Blab than just about anyone here. Thanks, Scott. I agree. Saying, yeah, this is true, Scott. So now if you type something in there in the um, chat section, Scott, yes. it will have H because you're the host. It, it will what? It'll have H. Notice how mine has G for guest. Yes. If you type, just type anything in there. Hey, Vicky, she found me. Yes, it has H because you're the host. I'm the host with hostess with the mostest. That's right. Cool. <laughs> well, does this end up going up on Twitter? Like, is that how the. No, this is the only time it goes to Twitter is when you hit the tweet, tell a little bird button. A little thing. The, nothing automatically ever goes to Twitter. Okay. And then the comments are not then being tweeted. Correct. And you can't tweet a comment unless you actually copy it and paste it over into. The and then when we're done, this recording is saved on my computer somewhere. They will send you when, when this is done, you'll get an email from team blab. It'll have, you'll love this because you're a podcaster. Yeah. It's going to give you a link to the, to download the MP3, oh, the okay. MP4 and the embed code. So you don't even have to do to strip the audio out. They're going to give you, the audio. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the podcaster's dream. <laughs> One last step in the podcasting workflow. <laughs> then you can edit it as you please, you know, because you're not awesome. going to want to have everything. It, if you use it for your podcast, you're just going to want to take snippets or whatever. Right. Right. And then right. That's, that's I've, I've posted that out now. So let people know we're here. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so let, let's 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 kick it off, guys. How I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking, how could you use Blab for local marketing? And you know what? I'm just thinking, event something, you know, uh, discussions on on what's going on in the area. What what are you thinking when you think about how a local business might use Blab for marketing and getting getting people into the Blab off Twitter? How would we? I was going to say it's kind of like this. Anything that you would use Twitter for for local marketing or even Instagram, because you can offer discounts. You can say, okay, everybody who comes to my event this afternoon where we're unveiling our new product is going to get 25% off, you know, and they, or they, they would have a special tweet because you've composed a tweet here. Blab is going to append slash, um, hashtag Blab and the URL, okay? And it's also going to oh. add everybody who's on camera at the time their username so if you notice in my tweet it says podcasters and m timberlake 71 yes mm -hmm. not going to add mine because i did the tweet but if anybody else like naomi did and see it has all three of our names there so in any way i wanted to tell you that because that limits the amount of characters for what you can add to the tweet so if you want to add something to the tweet that says we're here in philadelphia you know, yeah, hosting, you opening our, Philadelphia. Our, could, our new product or whatever. I'm sorry, say again. You could do hashtag Philadelphia 
hashtags, hashtags yes. Reno or something yes. like that. And they're always going to have the blab shortened link and the um, slash blab. But you can edit whatever. Like somebody else can hit that tweet button. I'm pointing the wrong way because everything is opposite. And they can edit right here the rest of it. Okay. So when somebody tweets this, they can put their own little take on it. So I'm just, uh, with me and Eileen were talking earlier in, in a, a blab, and I just, um, and we was, talk, we was talking a couple of things. Did you know what really jumped out at me? Like I, so I was saying in this about, I've never been a big fan of Twitter. I'm going to go on the record right now and say I've never been a big fan of Twitter because of 140 characters. Like I said earlier, I can't waffle in 140 characters. I find it very hard to waffle and engage with people. But this opens that up. And it really helps people connect. And just as evidence of that, I've got my SME Heroes Twitter um, account, and I've got my Mark Timberlake, and I've just, when people follow me, they follow me. It's that sort of thing. But I've been on free blabs in the last, uh, over the weekend, jumped in free blabs. And the amount of people that started following me is, is, is bomb. It's just. Twitter growth. Right. And, you know, and I, and I want to say that too, as far as how to tie back in that local marketing thing. If you are trying to grow your other social accounts, your Twitter account, whatever, it's going to happen here on Blab because, you know, people get excited. They want to put a lower third on Blab, but this is even better because you're in this box, but there's two links at the top of the page where people can click on and they can also click and follow you on Twitter. So they can follow you here and they can follow you on Blab in a matter of clicks and they're still in the Blab. Okay. Well, the thing is, is that when they click this, they're going to follow me? Yeah, here on Blab. And then when they click but then that, there's a But no, but also when they see your profile, just click on my profile. You'll see what I mean. And there's also a little um, thing under there that says follow me on Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can edit your Blab profile to make it specific. So this is another local marketing tip. See, I'm trying to keep it on topic, people here. <laughs> your Blab profile does not have to match your Twitter profile. In fact, I recommend that you edit it. So now you can customize that message. So you can change it every day. So if every day you have a different thing that's going on for your local business, Whenever you start your Blab up, you change your Blab profile, have a link, have a coupon code, have a whatever, okay? Or you have this special person coming in, you know, be sure you're there because so-and-so is going to teach you, know, you about skincare. You no, know, I'm thinking like retail shop, competitions, you know? Like right. you've got a retail shop, you've got a clothing shop. And you, you, you're going right. to do a contest on Sunday and you get people to jump in the Blab and the best question mm -hmm. and the thing and they get a free pair of jeans for being in it. You know, that's the type of stuff we can do on here. Um, you, know, you just got me thinking, Mark, here the creative juices are starting to go because I'm thinking there's three cameras going right now. And I'm thinking, OK, I'm in a retail store. I only got one. I got my computer or whatever. got one camera. And then I'm going, oh, my goodness, everybody's got a camera. So what would happen if you had, let's say you had a girl's uh, fashion shop, right? And three young ladies come in. And they say, oh, we want this other way. And they're all of a sudden, they're trying on stuff. So then you say, okay, girls. And you just get them all on a blab and they're pointing the cameras at themselves. I don't think I have mine right here. And they're all on and they're saying, well, what do you think of this? Mm -hmm. All kinds of amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, isn't it, guys? Because the strength of this, the strength of this is you can use it on mobile. Yes. That takes the video, the guerrilla marketing element of this video right. product. Absolutely. Anywhere, you know, with Hangouts, you know, you, you're risking it if you if you're not going oh, by a Wi-Fi connection. Let's take this international just for a second. I know it was local, but where do you live? I live in Philly. I live in Vancouver, England, Peterborough. Where in England? Peterborough in Cambridgeshire. Okay, so do you have like a city square that's kind of like old and gorgeous looking? Yes. And do you in Philadelphia? You got the Bell, right? I have everything here. You got everything here. And I go someplace that's absolutely amazing. We go with our cameras. We do a blab. And all of a sudden, instead of a 14th century, 14th century, just saying. Okay. All just right. Saying. It's, a little, okay. it's a little older. But I'm just saying. <laughs> How cool would that be? 
right? <laughs> you say, you know what? It's a beautiful day. In an uh, hour, let's meet at a landmark, set up our little camera, our, our phone. Do you guys know who Chocolate Johnny is? No. No. Chocolate, to- Chocolate Johnny uh, is a chocolatier. I believe he's in Eng- this is Australia. I'm sorry. He's in Australia. And so he's been pretty active on sites like Periscope, Instagram. He was on Sue B. Zimmerman's Instagram Creative Live. And that's kind of where I knew about him from. So he is going to start having blabs where one camera will be on making the chocolate. Another camera will be on packaging up the chocolate. Another camera will be on eating the chocolate. (laughs) You know, so, and I think that's going to start up real soon because he connected with some people here on Blab. And uh, so they're going to come in and help them because he was real helpful where um, one of the guys, Tristan, he had lost a Wi-Fi connection at home. And Tristan is like, he's like me. He's one of those people that's always on here helping people with Blab. So that was like, he was going crazy. But he walked, went down to Chocolate Johnny's and Chocolate Johnny said, oh, yeah, you can use my Wi-Fi and set up a little area for him wow. to uh, use his Wi-Fi. And so now they're going to be helping him, like, expand his business. Cool. Branching out, mm. HQ just said, I love uh, Chocolate Johnny. And she's going to be doing a blab with him. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. Mm. And also, yes, yeah, Chef Guy, um, Vicky, my friend Vicky reminded me chef dennis chef dennis is also has a huge following on google plus and uh, but i don't know that chef dennis is doing it for business i just i know that he has a great following i never actually see him sell anything but mm-hmm. he can, it's the same concept you yeah. know with the cooking he he does cooking shows and so he's going to have the different camera angles with the different uh, lab and i think one of the other things with local marketing when we reach out to an international audience it's quite easy to find people to follow us but when we do local marketing oftentimes it's harder to get an engaged level locally and a lot of the time is the technology gets in the way and this you know and this what i think is what's really powerful we can do so much guerrilla marketing with this and the technology is not going to get in the way and i think that's something google needs to learn with their hangouts you know I had to create a mini course in my course showing people how to just connect and start a hangout. And it's like a, it's like a 12 step process to with this. Boom. You just, well, I just said to Scott, Scott, let's not do a hangout tonight. Let's do a blab. That's right. And he's like, and then he sends me a link back with a blab link. That's it. And all you saw, all you need is Twitter and a link. I've never used it before. And he's like, just sent, and he's just started his own blab, you know, and it's took him like two seconds. It was fun. So, it took, it took me eight minutes to actually find my way into the blab, even though it's sent me the link. So it obviously tells you a lot about me. But I think that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> that's what it is, 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 you know, it's that, it's that availability, it's being able to connect with people, especially the younger generation. The younger generation, the reason Hangouts, I don't think, works that well for them is because then they're mobile. So I think if you're marketing locally and your product is maybe to young people, mm-hmm. you, you know, something like this could be really powerful. I can just see so much stuff, guys. Yeah, I agree. I think with the, particularly with the younger generation, because they love, uh, you know, they love using their phones. They love taking pictures. They love taking the videos. They video chat with each other all the time. And to be able to get up and just, and I'm thinking like video games in particular, you know, it's, Four geeks getting on and talking about uh, World of Warhead or whatever it is. You know. <laughs> okay, now are you familiar Warcraft, with Warcraft. Are you familiar with Joel Com? Joel Com, he's I a just, big social media I just guy. Tweeted out, Joel Com created a monster because he's the reason I was able to get in so fast because he was blabbing about blab, and I actually went and watched one. And in the process, I think of watching one, I almost signed up. So when Mark said, "Let's do a blab." I went to Blab and it actually had my name and something else already and just said, put your email in. And I put my email in and here we were. And I really didn't do anything. Well, the reason I mentioned him, because one of the creative things that I saw him do outside of, you know, just doing social media stuff is he, he and his son did a gaming thing where um, they use probably Manny Cam or XSplit or one of these other tools where they just had their little profile in the back i mean at the bottom and you watch them play a game and they were both playing the same game 
and it was going on in Blab. And I thought that was really, really cool. And I don't even like gaming. No. I was there for like three minutes watching like, oh, my God, that is so cool. And it was a father son bonding thing going on at the same time. So it, it was really decent. It was, it was really nice. So um, for next step is slash Q, not Q slash. And I know that is so hard to remember. <laughs> Tips to market local in this galaxy wide tool. OK, before yeah. we answer that question, we have a more important one. Sorry, next step. But. Elaine, you want to know, is that an in-air dude? No. <laughs> Johan, no. It's just <laughs> me, you know, like trying to get it behind my ears. Or I have an in-air dude. Uh, yeah, Scott, I noticed that you're, it's much longer now. <laughs> I've, I've kept mine the same for like 10 years. Just, you put a black it, background so nobody can tell. If yeah, yeah, this saves me a haircut, Scott. Your my hair's hair, out like, like this. It's, it's actually out here. But with a black background, you can't see it. So I, I'm, I'm golden. Johan is one of the people that I introduced to Blab. And, you know, it just goes to show where you were talking about you, you saw it and then Mark told you to come over. But I went on Periscope one day after I started using Blab. And I did a dual multicast. I had my phone over here on a tripod showing people Blab. And believe it or not, it's only like three people watching. And one of them was already on Blab. <laughs> but the other one was my friend, Johan, who is in Belgium and wow. who now does Dutch speaking Blabs here on Blab. So I'm very proud of my, my baby, Johan. <laughs> Cause I brought somebody from Belgium, geez. That's awesome. You know? and, and he's doing Dutch speaking Blabs. And it's just a different, another use case for this platform and how awesome it is right mm, i think i think this is this is what maybe hangouts were supposed to be does that make sense oh yeah you know, this is like what hangouts are supposed to be just this but the technology and i think you know like i was saying in that other hangout earlier you know i think this is going to be a wake-up call for google and I, I imagine them watching this thinking what are these guys up to this is really interesting because I I guess Hangouts are brilliant. Don't get me wrong. I love Hangouts. I get that YouTube traffic. You know, I'm not going to give them up. But right. this this just breaks those technology barriers down. And that that is what good social media marketing technology should do. Yeah, make it easy. Mm, mm. My and friend I, Larry you know, I love I love the Google Hangouts, but I have uh, I've been doing it so often it's second nature. And then and and I understand exactly what you're saying, Mark, because there are people that I'll have as guests on my hangouts and they've never used it. And it's like an hour to get them on. And it's, and I don't understand the problem that they've got. Right. But there is definitely a problem there. So let's get back to the local marketing using blab, because that was a really good question that uh, uh, somebody just gave us. And I think, I think one of the things is, first of all, who is on blab now? And, and how can you leverage it? The other thing is, is leveraging Twitter. And one Rebecca! of the- I'm sorry, Re Rebecca. Re Gary <laughs> 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 Hi, Rebecca. I, I don't know if I know Rebecca, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just going with Eileen's enthusiasm. Everything <laughs> is interrupted. <laughs> but, Scott, you, you were saying. Well, I think it's, you know, who is your tribe? Like there's two, there's two parts to this sort of thing. One is prospecting, finding new people. The other is, connecting closer to your tribe, right? So for example, there's a local comic shop. I, as you can see, I'm a comic fan, right? So the, the owner of it gets on, he gets three of his customers on and they talk about the latest comic. So what does that do? Well, if you're telling all the people coming into your store, by the way, you know, here's our Twitter handle, like Port Coquitlam oh, comic. It's a Wednesday night show. And we're gonna, and we're gonna schedule it on Wednesday, join in. Yep. And all of a sudden, you've got them going up and down the, the thing on this side or tweeting mm -hmm. on this side. And they're all, hmm, I shouldn't say that they're, I was going to say they're all young. That's not true. They're, a lot of them are my age, right? But when I go into those shops, there's a lot of young people and they're playing these good games in the back and they're doing all these different things. So I'm just taking that as an example. We're already, as a local business, you have a local following. You have, a, I'm assuming, a store as opposed to, uh, being an on, like, I don't know how, why you would be an online local business, not having a store. Well, yeah. Well, actually, a lot, a, lot, a lot of stores these days, 
they need to local businesses need to supplement their business with online products, especially when we talk retail. Yeah. Um, but this is a great way of not just appearing locally, but to get that out there. So if you've got any sort of online, you know, we, we had 10 years in online commerce. And, you know, if you've got any online commerce, the biggest thing sometimes is where do you find your clients? Where do you, it's very hard to do content marketing with retail because it's, you know, it's try and write an interest. And Eileen might disagree with me now, but try and write an interest. She's the blog queen. Try and write an interesting blog about your latest stuff that's coming to your store for the autumn season. It's very hard to get people really excited about that. Okay, so let's talk, what, what do you mean by content? Because if you mean something that's written and written, Sorry. well, I would agree, but I think of it as audio and multimedia, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking if I have a fashion store and I've got the this stuff just arrived, holy smokes, I'll get my three sales assistants and we'll all be holding up, what do you think of this? And what do you think? Of, I think that would be absolutely. 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 You see, but you couldn't do that in the past because the technology was, yeah, you could post some things. That, I've seen people do it. And don't get me wrong. I've seen local businesses do this well. They've got, like, especially uh, we did some work for a fashion shop with some local um, stuff. And what they would do on their Facebook very, very well, get people to follow them and then show their new lines as they came in. You know, and this was this is the sort of place that sells a T-shirt for, like, 80 pounds. Are you with me? Yeah. You know, now why anybody would pay a pound for a t-shirt is beyond me, but they were using Facebook and they were doing it well. So, I am not their demographic. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Me neither, you know. <laughs> can't wait to buy one. Huh? I can't wait to buy one. <laughs> but are you with me? Yeah. Like so they were already using Facebook at that level. It's but it's very difficult to get engagement beyond that. But like you say, Scott, now you can do this. Do you get me? You know, get yeah. some young people in, maybe wearing the stuff, filming them. You know, you're in a blab. What do you think of this? This is a new season. This is what's coming out. This sure. is why this is popular. All of a sudden, you've got incredible engagement you can create. Well, yeah. so here's a different one. I have a next door neighbor who out of her garage is a florist. So definitely local and definitely can't send the flowers around the world. Right. But she mm -hmm. goes to a wedding and. She's got a camera, her husband's got a camera, her floral assistant's got a camera. They get the, the, the bride or the bridesmaids or whatever, and they're all talking about how exciting this is for five minutes. Now, mm -hmm. that, and then, you know, and that goes up. Like, look at this flower arrangement. Look how beautiful this is. They did something, like he was telling, the husband was telling me, like they went to this place and it was like four acres, immaculate, uh, you know, landscaping, everything else. It was like a $10 million home and they were in the backyard having the wedding. Now, who wouldn't want to see something like that, you know, in a blab? Like, here we are, everybody. And the bride's going up and, you know, have a camera showing the, I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the way to just bring people in. And the fact that you've got four cameras just gives you, you know, we used to have cameramen and we were switching back and forth. Now it's like, Eileen was saying with the chocolate guy, right? Here they're making chocolate, there they're making chocolate, there they're eating chocolate, and there they're packaging the chocolate, right? So same thing with a wedding or any sort of event that just sort of happens, right? And if you've done if you've done any um, live, tried to do any live broad multi-cam broadcasting, you know, for me to do that from where I am, I probably got I must have about eight thousand pounds of equipment to do that, and I've got a switcher. And I do it for hangouts and hangouts crashes, you know, halfway through and I lose my audience and I have to start a new hangout to get it going. And everyone's trying to find me. Everyone's frustrated. And now, bang, here we are. Like you say, we're doing multi-cam. Four, four cameras, you're multi-cam. Yeah. And that's that's incredible, isn't it? You know, getting, you know, and getting, getting that engagement, getting people on. So how do we think, Eileen, you've obviously been around it more than us. We're just sort of getting excited because we're here. Hi, Michelle. What's, what's the demographic you're seeing? Because I know you've been hanging out in the blabs and stuff. What demographic are you seeing at the moment are jumping wow. in on this? That, you know, that is um, mm, a tough question because we have a really wide range. And I would say that it's kind of just like, pretty much any social network, you do have millennials here. Somebody asked a question the other day and they said, um, do you think it's going to be hard for Blab to catch on because millennials aren't early adopters? And I'm like, they don't know what you're talking about. Because when I came here, 
<laughs> there was nothing here but millennials, <laughs> you know, but, you know, so we have that. Then we have a bunch of educators here. It is so super niche of all the different facets of, of you know, then we got a bunch of social media. We got a bunch of people that were on Periscope that either were kind of disgruntled with Periscope or they see this as an extension of whatever they were doing on Periscope. So I, I think it's kind of pretty hard to pigeonhole. I mentioned uh, my friend Johan doing the Dutch speaking. My friend Erin is doing Portuguese and that Portuguese blast has been going on for hours and she's like up on the top of the page because she's got a lot of uh, people in there. I didn't even know there was a big Portuguese community here. So you just don't, it's all over the place. So you're saying, you're saying a very broad demographic, which is good. Very hang, yeah. Hangouts has got its own demographic and the young generation, I don't think ever really took to it that much. You and me, they was either on YouTube live doing their gaming stuff, you know, or they were straight on YouTube and they didn't really come to Google Hangouts. So you have a much more mature audience, I think, on on. on on Google Plus, on that, what what I'm seeing, you know, very and very business orientated sort of market as well. So it's interesting that you've sort of seen all this because that's really what we need in the video streaming world is we need that broad demographic, and I, I you know, I can see this working for them. Yeah, I was in a, a room this morning where one girl, she's not a tattoo artist, but she's almost like a tattoo model, where she's got all these beautiful tattoos and she still hasn't decided how she's going to monetize that yet but then there was also another guy who uh, um specializes in fine art because well, he said he does art and i was like what kind of art he said fine art and graffiti and i was like okay that's kind of like all over the place but yet he considers himself as an artist and so he's got um his his demographic and i think he's going to be doing great here. In fact, I told those two, they need to collaborate because, you know, when you're talking graffiti and tattoos in my head, that goes together. Right. <laughs> but, you know, so, and I, I do want to tell you guys about something that's kind of a little bit off topic, but not really. It's about blab. There is this girl who does sketches. She's, she's an artist, right. And she has set up an Instagram account and it's called humans of blab. And what she does is you never know when she's going to do your sketch. Okay. And after she does your sketch, she posts it on Instagram. And see, this is what I consider as content marketing because she's an artist and she's not selling anything. Okay. But she's, she loves the platform and she sees this as a way to get herself known. And I believe she's also, I want to say she's, uh, she's somewhere in Scandinavia, I believe, because <laughs> I went to her YouTube channel and I was like, okay, I don't know what language this is. <laughs> but um, so you check out cool. the Humans of Blab account and you never know. Keep watching because you might wind up being sketched over there. And uh, I like to see yeah. that. Oh, she is yeah. built. Okay, Johan says yeah. she is Belgian. So. And she, yep. Sheila, Sheila just, I want to give Sheila a shout out. She just posted a link to another, um, obviously, video app which is oh, here, okay. in. here and because a lot of people first thing they want to do do you have private blabs no 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 never going to have private blabs <laughs> but, but, but we can do that in appearing if we want but that's that's hangouts that's you know but if you get into the place where you want to privately chat for me i'm i'm a hangout guy i'd go straight to hangouts for that i, use I know to lock that down you use skype yeah. i think that market's already covered isn't it i think it's very difficult to get to get that whereas this with the public you know the openness and the way people can you know and it's the fishbowl thing isn't it everyone can look in and mm -hmm. you know. yeah and appear that and i believe it's only eight people <clears throat> can get yeah that's what i was that. saying yeah someone asked the question scott did you see that question uh someone was saying well, how to i want to bring up james's uh toffs he had a great comment which is some people use blab as an after party or virtual meetup after a scope or meet Yes. And I really thought, so I was been thinking too, what is more local than your local sporting event? So afterwards you get on with three of your buddies or three of your friends and you talk about the hockey game or the football game. And I mean, that would be. Uh, you just, you just made me realize, Scott, just thinking about that, you got your kid's soccer game. 
Oh yeah. It, yeah, you just get your web, you get your mobile out now. You record it and you send it out, and then you ever have to, you know, you can actually, you know, sit there and, you know, you want to get some stabilization on that mobile, guys, because there's nothing worse than an image that's going like this. Mm -hmm. But you get you get your 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 phone taking the game in, and then your wife's taking you in, and you do commentary on it. And all it is, what's your son's name? Me, I don't have one. I'm just saying, if you got oh. one, <laughs> I've got a daughter. All you do is talk about Joey. The ball can be on the other end of the field. Right. But Joey's. <laughs> I, I could I could borrow a child if I need one. <laughs> exactly. Me too. <laughs> I know people with children. So I have a daughter, but she does web design, so. <laughs> and I've done that. I've actually done a blab from her office, and which I'm going to be doing my YouTube course there live on October the third. But um, yeah, I did behind. In fact, I I did I combined it with Instagram. And she, when I got to the office, she actually had went to the post office, so she wasn't there. So on Instagram, I put up, I'm in the boss's chair. I'm taking over, and I made sure I got her logo there, right? And then later on, about half an hour later, I did a blab, and I was there because another course was being held there, and did I did a Periscope. And I showed, you know, the course as the course was, was being taught. So now everybody who follows me anywhere who saw any of those media now knows I have a daughter that does web design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As if I don't say it enough times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what does your daughter do? She does. Most, she specializes in e-commerce. <laughs> oh, Nazim, we're going to be, are we in London or are we in Milan? We're in London and let me show you a hell of a view. Sorry to interrupt the conversation. <laughs> Glad to have you. And oh wow! Yes. You guys know Nazim because he's a Google Pluser. No, I'm not met Nazim. Okay, he's from. He lives in Milan, Italy, and he does a lot of local business stuff. I was, I was, I'm doing a photo shoot in that area. Um, but he's on holiday yeah. in, in London. <laughs> Very uh, nice, nice hotel you got there. At a friend's house. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're at a friend's house. <laughs> Oh, Great I go. <laughs> we want to meet him. <laughs> oh, you see me in that one. You see Brilliant. parents to show four different angles. Oh, you're frozen. You're stuck now, Nazim. There you okay, go. There you no, go. He's back. <laughs> All right, because you're on iPhone, right? Oh yeah, he got. Yeah, that. we've lost him. We've lost him. So, how does this produce? How well does this perform on um, sort of 3G? Um, Eileen, is this is the connection? What is it like? Ten frames a second, sort of thing. I, I, and I don't know the difference between like a three G or because I don't know what people are on. Like when I see people having issues, I don't know what kind of connection they have. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. But I do know that it's it's better if the person is stable, you know, and they're not moving around. But there are times when I've seen. In fact, there was um, one of my favorite blabbers, this guy named Pablo, but. His um, handle is Puerto Ruvian. It might be a little scary because his avatar is a little fun. But one time he was on a speedboat. Oh, oh wow. Lying to you. And he was coming through <laughs> just as clear. I mean, you like you see the ocean behind him. And it's like, oh my God, what are you doing? How are you blabbing on this people? <laughs> <laughs> but it was just cool to see. And he was only on for like 30 seconds. But it was just so cool just to see that. And so it worked fine. Then there was another guy who had, his, mm. it, like he was driving around and he had an even better connection, but he wanted to do an event. Um, there was a biker's event in Sturgis, which is, I'd never, I'd never heard of. And I was so looking forward to it. He went out to T-Mobile and got this best top of the line connection. It didn't work. Mm. It didn't when he actually got there because they promised him, if T-Mobile doesn't work, it'll pick up the AT&T and the this and the that and the third, and it didn't work for him. So it yeah, kind of just depends. You just, yeah. you know. You've got, to, you've, you've, got to, you've got to have a network, haven't you? You've got to have a, you've got, I think you must have a minimum of 3G. Obviously, 4G, they sell it, <laughs> but like in England, the only place that has it is central London. Um, I don't know where you guys are getting on with 4G. Have they been sort of trying to sell that to you guys around there? There's actually no 4G masks anywhere to actually yeah. get the signal. But um, I was just wondering. So I'm, I'm just imagine it's quite stable on 3G. Um, 
you know, if you're seeing those, because that's going to be 3G, I imagine a lot of science, mm -hmm. that's really, really good. So I, I would recommend, that, like, if somebody comes on, or if, if you're the person who wants to, we're, let's bring it back to local business now, right? Yeah. I would recommend that you, you know, be stationary, you know, get your get it all, lab all set up, and then just slowly start your, whatever it is you're trying to show, and to see how stable the connection is. Because a lot of times you're out in the field, you really don't even know what connection you're really getting. Mm -hmm. You might look at your bars, but it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> Until you get cut off, then that's when you realize those bars didn't make, make a difference. And so proceed with caution. And then once you see that you're still stable, then I would get into whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Start and I think recording. If people, recording. people don't. One of, one of the things as well is that Scott Scowcroft made a good point. He said, you know, that football game, you have four parents all filming the same game so you can watch it from four angles. You know, and I think I think for me, whenever I see technology break barriers down, I get excited because, yeah, you know, like Scott was saying earlier, you know, you're now, you're, you're now the cameraman. You know, just producing that Hangouts was a major, you know, barrier breakdown at the time. And yes, you know, they've not simplified as much as they should. And there's things that, you know, you get the sense with Google sometimes they get a shiny new tool. And after a little while, they stop playing with it and they get bored and they're looking for the next thing to play with. But what you've got now is you've essentially, you can go out, you can buy like camera stabilizers. If I buy a camera stabilizer, for my uh, one of my heavy cameras, you know, I'm I'm talking like six, seven hundred pounds to get something decent. You can get an iPhone stabilizer that works for about fifty pounds. So you can do run and gun shooting now, you know. And if you've got that connection, it's just like you were saying earlier, and you can just get a little tripod, simple little tripod, stick your iPod on it. You know, this the the, the that barrier, that breakdown of actually being able to broadcast. You know, the broadcast barrier, I know Scott will love it, Scott Scalper. The broadcast barrier has just gone. Yeah. And that's phenomenal. Scott would say citizen journalism. Yes. He would. <laughs> he would. Citizen journalism. Uh, I love how James, James is awesome for <laughs> He hasn't given us his secret sauce on that's how he does it. On on James. Yeah. Yeah. And I told him to hold close to the chest okay <laughs> have to share a gif huh yeah but um anytime you post uh an image it has to be on a secure it has to be on https <laughs> but still sometimes they still don't work <laughs> okay so, yeah. so he's got the secret sauce thank you james yeah. mind blown, mind blown. <laughs> so you do you so say you've got all this opportunity now as a local business and i think sometimes local businesses really struggle with the concept of marketing themselves and being and i think sometimes it's difficult to break through the creative barrier with a local business so i can see that like, all the things we've been talking about tonight it really it really there are opportunities here to break through that creative barrier isn't there that's, that's, no. a, that's a great topic to mark for even another blab like how can you help especially if this person is your client how can you help them see the value? And, you know, because first of all, it's the time crunch, right? They're like, I got a many things to do. I got to fill orders. I got to, you know, go look after my staff or whatever, depending upon what their business is. And so they don't see that value in the um, dealing with social media at all. So even thinking about live streaming, that's like taking it to the next level. Then you're like blab. And then they're like, huh? Like, like James's thing, mind blown. Like, what are you talking about? So I think that that is definitely something that we need to strategize on. And here comes talking about strategy. This woman, hopefully she comes in here without any problems. That's the street strategy queen right there, y'all. Hello. Hey. Welcome. Hey. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you. Hey. I, had to, I had to get into a place where I could actually, I was in the car and popped mm -hmm. on and yeah so exciting hey. hey always awesome sunday when i get to talk to eileen oh thank you sweetie rebecca you guys she's so humble so i'll just let you know she knows her stuff when it comes to and she's got a lot of, that she can contribute to this conversation she's even working for post planner now she's i mean she's just great writer great blogger she's one of the top 10 blogs by social media examiner in fact so go ahead, Rebecca. Oh. 
See, I could not have done myself justice like you do. <laughs> so much better. I, this is such an uh, awesome conversation. Um, we have a, a Twitter chat. I don't know if you're familiar with Ann Tran and Diana Adams and I, uh, influencer chat. And we're actually talking about this topic on Tuesday night, which is kind of how I stumbled onto this, Eileen. I was looking at all of your video stuff to use you as an example. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Funny how that works, right? Right. Um, and it's just such, a, it's such an explosive topic, I think, because you, you guys are touching on so many different important points about how do small businesses manage this within their day? You know, their day is already just so hectic and so crazy. And how do you fit video, let alone live streaming into it? Um, and I, I think you really have hit the nail on the head. You know, it's got to be integrated into your overall marketing strategy and you have to figure out what's the benefit what's the value that not only it's bringing to my business uh, my potential customer or uh, my clients Rebecca you are you're already little kind of information are they looking for looking and Am I? Yeah, I might not have. Yeah. I might not have great service right here where I'm at. A little yeah, bit. We've got that. your audio Am now, I though. Enough? Okay, now. Yeah. Anyway, I, you know, I was just uh, talking about the whole strategy aspect, and what I see right now is a lot of people jumping on board, but not knowing why they're jumping on board. Uh, and I think that's going to be the key to sustainability with anything, especially with something like live streaming mm -hmm. is how does it fit into your business? How does it work into what you're already doing? And I think it can be an enormous support to what you're already doing. And I think it also acts as a connector between us and those potential clients where, I, I mean, my goodness, think about the opportunities to get yourself face to face with people in real time and solving their problems in real time uh, and being able to share all of that knowledge, all of that expertise that you have uh, outside of the written word. You talked about blogging and blogging is definitely where my heart mm -hmm. is, but oh, video, my goodness, you know, I think the, the opportunity- Well, this started off as a podcast endless. recording between Mark and I that uh, I just spiraled totally out of control, which we we're happy about. <laughs> so we were finding the audio aspect of it, and now we have four video go. streams going on. Mm -hmm. And I think I think what you're saying there, Rebecca, is really really important for people because I think sometimes businesses can jump onto the latest thing and not know how that fits into their marketing funnel, where it fits, what's the you know thing. So for me, I would see this as a very top of funnel marketing activity. It's a great place to get people's engagement and to. Just to put out your thing, and I loved what you were saying then about, you know, um, problem solving for them, you know, actually going through a problem solving scenario with them and, and showing people, you know, just doing that live, you know, so like the way we would do that maybe is a QA and a on, you know, just some open stuff. That's a really basic way. But you could do some really, you know, like if you're doing someone's doing wedding planning and they're choosing stuff and you've got a camera and you can just go through the wedding planning process. These are the things you need to be looking at buying. These are the things. And you're doing that live. You've just convinced someone of your expertise. You're there. Right. right. You know what I was going to ask for, Rebecca? You if go. you could give yeah, us I the link that. to the Twitter chat. Because I think that that's a great way, too, that Blab can be integrated with that. Because a lot of small businesses don't realize what a Twitter chat is and how it could help them. And Rebecca's probably got a few case studies <laughs> about, you know, how you can use a Twitter Just a chat. Few. Yeah. And, um, I know Brian Fanzo had asked if Blab, if Team Blab could incorporate some of his Twitter chats that are going on. And, and I don't think Blab is ready to do that yet because they really want to focus on making the platform stable and keeping the conversation here. But but what Kristen Cardos, who's uh, who works for Brian, well, they work for the same place, has done is that she made like quick click to tweets so that and then she would post that 
in the comment section. I'm on, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> in the comment section, so that whenever there was a um, part of the Twitter chat, let's say it was question, what are you going to do about you know local business or local business marketing on Blab? And then when you would click on her click to tweet, it will open up in Twitter and it will be answer to the question number one, or so it will be a one, and then it would have their hashtag there, which was whatever small biz chat or whatever their hashtag is. So it, it's kind of like a workaround, but it's still another way that you can integrate Twitter. And I think because a lot, so many people are on Twitter and that's why it's so great that you can just sign in to blab with Twitter. I think that is also good to, you know, take that to the next step with integrating it with a Twitter chat. Kind of got to be a little savvy in order to do that, but somebody like Rebecca, you know, could help you, could help you out with that. I never knew there was a Twitter chat, so I learned something. Yeah, I, I, I love, I love those points. I said I never sorry, even heard of a sorry, Twitter chat, so now I just learned something. Oh yeah. You, okay, yeah. It's, describe it. Oh, oh so wow. 19th century now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's relevant to the conversation. So yeah. <laughs> well, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. So a Twitter chat is basically just bringing a whole bunch of like minded people together on one stream. So you're following the same hashtag. You're interacting around a topic that's important, relevant, maybe you're passionate about. Um, and you're all able to talk about that in real time. So what Eileen was talking about is, for example, we use it within an hour we ask 10 different questions around one specific topic as i was saying this tuesday night is going to be video marketing uh and how to use that to really build your brand to build brand awareness and what it can do uh to build influence credibility online authority uh, which is exactly what we're talking about with video and blab um, I think there, there are so many parallels to what they can do for you. And to your point, Mark, definitely both of them are that, that top of the funnel uh, awareness where you are opening yourself up to a whole group of people mm -hmm. that may not have ever heard about you um, because they're just, they're seeing in their stream this Twitter hashtag or they're seeing somebody's tweeted out about a blab and all of a sudden they're over and they're watching uh, and you've got that whole new audience exposure that you would have never had otherwise. So it, it, I think there's a lot of similarities be between the two. Obviously with Twitter, uh, you're behind the screen and just uh, mm -hmm. tweeting like a madman within that hour. <laughs> uh, we, we have somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 tweets that go on in influencer chat uh, within that hour. And then I also run a Twitter chat with uh, Aaron Lee uh, for Post Planner on Thursday nights and same type of traffic called uh, viral chat. We're both talking about a lot of the same stuff, which is social media, social media marketing, small business, just all of those problems that as marketers we're dealing with, um, how to integrate uh, video marketing into your business. As I said, it's definitely a top one, I think, where it's something that you're wanting to dip your toe into, but you're not quite sure how to do it or you know, why Rebecca, you should I do think it, it or what you should be talking about. For Blab, to show people how they can integrate those Twitter chats within the Blab. And if we could get Kristen on there too, because like I said, she's already doing it. And, uh, you know, just to show people the flexibility of the platform and the integration of how easy it is to get on here with Blab, as long as you're on Twitter, you know, so I definitely will work. And I just wanted to I just wanted to jump in and so I know that Scott's really, yeah. you know, me and Scott talked about a lot and we use this and we're gonna be doing this with this, and that's the repurposing of content. Because like Eileen said with this, you know, and this is me and Scott, we're very new to this, we're just paddling in the blab pool now and we're getting very interested in it. But the, the repurposing of content, one of the things that small businesses have trouble doing is developing content on a regular basis. They start out, you know, and you know, even to the point where I tell my clients, take your dates off your blog post because there's nothing worse than someone turning up and your last blog post is November 2012. You know, and someone lands on your web page and that's what they see. 
And one of the things I struggle with is consistent material that they can put out. But this is brilliant because what have you got here? We, like me and Scott, the way we'd normally think about this straight away, we do this with Hangouts, is we'd go, right, this is a podcast. Scott's going to use this as a podcast. This is a podcast. This is the audio file for a podcast. It's now a video file. I can take this, download this, up to, upload this to my YouTube channel. You know, it doesn't have to be an hour-long thing. It can be a 20-minute chat. And there's so many different ways you can use this mm -hmm. to then create that content for local businesses. So I didn't know what we, yeah, transcript, if you want to pay someone to go and transcript it. But I didn't know what you guys were sort of thinking about the repurposing potential here as well. Yeah, and that's that's a huge aspect. I love that you touched on that because I definitely I'm talk sure about that. that a lot and help a lot of people with that it, it, exact thing um, because you don't have to reinvent the wheel to take something like Blab or like live streaming on. Um, one terrific area to look is, and one of my favorite tools is Buzzsumo, you can just simply put in your website, take a look at what your top performing content is. So what content uh, has done really, really well across social media already? So obviously there's an audience for it. People have said, yeah, 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 I love it. Um, so take that content and repurpose it into maybe a how-to or maybe uh, a Q&A like you were talking about, Mark, where you can say, these are some of the top questions I get asked every single day within my business and, and just start to answer those in, in, a, in a blab. Uh, just such a simple way to take stuff that, A, you're answering every single day already. And so you have to imagine if one person's asking that question, you probably have 100 more people that are out there Googling, looking for that exact answer. So why not become that resource uh, to people that go to resource where they just know that, wow, okay, you know, Mark or Eileen, every time I have a question, they it's as if they're in my head. They've already answered it. Uh, and I think Blab is that unique opportunity to, to become that that go-to resource from a video, a live streaming, because not that everybody real can time blog. perspective. Not everybody can write. And I, I speak to people like this, you know, and right. we've got some bloggers here. We all know, I imagine every single one of us here knows how to write a blog, okay? And But not everybody is comfortable writing a blog. And, but they can just, like you say, they can record that Q&A, create a video blog really quick, really simple. And the beauty of it is we always teach people is look for the stupid questions. And we, we say that not to denigrate anybody, but to help people realize you don't know what you know. So people will ask you for content. And we know this is the basis of good content. Is It's the questions people, put, people keep asking, which you was just touching on there, Rebecca. It's, it's the, the things that you just think, why are they asking me that again? <laughs> that's the content. That's that's the golden content. So you know, the thing is back so to marketing because when yes, marketing, when you've got, yeah, so, so now you've got, so now you've got a local business. People get, if you get people on the panel ask, asking you questions, they're creating the content. So right. you can do that live. I like it. I love it when you get excited and I can't shut you up, Mark. That was you great. That's waffle, Scott. Uh, guys, yeah, I'm, I'm the, getting ready I have a friend who does podcasting coaching for local businesses. And I'm sorry, on. Scott. I got to jump off, honey. Okay. I, I, I'm going to still be listening in, but I got something I got to do. Okay. Love, love, love hanging with you guys. And I would definitely blab with you again. Thanks for joining us, today. Oh, Eileen, it yeah. was so and we, we're good. We're going to have to uh, hang up in about seven minutes because Mark has a uh, online video educator OV uh, hangout. Scott, OV hangout. Scott, OV hangout. It's easy. It's OV -E. But anyway, <laughs> this, what this podcaster does is he goes into a dentist and he says, "Give me a list of your top ten questions." Exactly what you were saying, Mark. And then when a, a patient comes in, like for the first time, or he's going to be doing something like a root canal or whatever. He takes out a prescription pad and he ticks off the podcasts and he say, says, go here and listen to those. So this is what you're talking about is a really, really powerful strategy for local businesses. It's like you just you do the blab. Now you've got an embedded video that you can have on your website or you've got an audio that you can put into your podcast. Somebody comes in. You don't have to spend an hour explaining to them why there's this going on or why there's that going on. It's just 
go here and then come back and uh, you know make another appointment in a week come back once you've watched all this stuff and we'll talk and it saves them hours and hours and hours Oh yeah, what a great use. It's it's kind of like using, you could use it yes. for your entire process. So as you're looking for differentiation, which of course everybody is, why not use Blab to walk people through your process, kind of your onboarding process of what does it look like to work with me? What does it look like uh, in a day-to-day -day scenario? Or here's how I help people every single day, and here's how that would feel for you as a potential client. So you have that, that ability to really give people some unique insight into the behind the scenes working. And that ties in very nicely to Rebecca. So what Google tried to do, I think with um, the, the Google business photos, I'm not even sure what they call it now, they keep changing the name, but Google business photos was the opportunity to see inside a business. Now I got involved in that and we create these virtual tours but I stopped after a little while because I realized that the actual content value wasn't that high for my clients. But with this, you know, just going back to, to your scenario, Scott, now, so now you've got the things. But now also you can do a really short video you put on YouTube, you know, because now all you need is your iPhone, maybe a little tripod. You can record what it looks like in your store. You can do a mini guided video and all you need you know, is the 18-year-old, 17-year-old assistant that comes in on a Sunday and does a few hours, you know, say, here you go, you figure it out, create a video for me, let's stick that on the website. And now you've got video tours inside. And that's, I think, you know, that's where we can go with this stuff. It's just that, that barrier, that technology barrier is just disappearing. And it is, yeah. it's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Well, and and back to your point about repurposing, then think about all of the content you can generate out of those videos. They become, uh, you know, maybe mini Q&A blog posts. Uh, they become just separate little tweets where you could pull out 140 characters, you know, maybe 10, 20 out of that, that, that one video. So there's just really the sky is the limit when you start to think about how you can use these blabs to connect uh, with your potential market um, and just continue to create and expand upon that one blab that you did you took you know maybe you like you said you you took five minutes to do a little behind the scenes in your office and now all of a sudden you have all kinds of content mm. you can create mm, out of right. that so that's a good place for us to stop because we have uh, three minutes and then we've got to be prepared for our hangout uh, <laughs> On to more videos. This one's a hangout. This is the old fashioned, you know. This is, isn't it? In, isn't it interesting yeah. to be looking at Google Hangouts and thinking, you know, this is the the old school method, isn't yeah. it? Interesting? That's right. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Thanks for well, thanks for letting me jump in, guys. So it's great again, to Rebecca. see you. Thank you. Yeah. Take yeah, care. absolutely. Thank you all right, for joining care. us and everybody that's watching. Appreciate having you along too, and all of your comments. And uh, we had 67 people viewing throughout the uh, time that we were here. So that was awesome. And uh, so we'll see you all in the Hangout. Uh, just go over to Google Plus and look for us. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Just, what I'll do, I'll just pop the thing in there, Scott, before we close. People are asking for the Hangout URL. So let me just grab that very quickly. Um, and what's the topic for the uh, Hangout going to be? We're going to be looking at um, uh, creating, so we're going to be having a Udemy chat. So we're going to be talking about another very hot online property. And we're going to be looking about creating Udemy courses and how we might use them on third party platforms or how to use third party platforms for online education. Um, and we're specifically talking about earning money online. So, and how we might create that. So I'm just going to copy this very quickly, Scott, before we go. Just a couple of people have asked for the Hangout, which will be going live in half an hour. And uh, so if you want to join in and watch that, there we go. That's the link. Mark has created a, a very quickly created a group of over a thousand, getting close to 1100 now, uh, 
online video educators and trainers, coaches and speakers. And every two weeks, he puts together an amazing uh, hangout where he gets a number of experts together. This and usually a number of experts plus one non-expert, that's me, uh, this week. Uh, talking about different aspects of online training and video training in particular. And we met through the Udemy platform and and have, have developed a really good relationship, you know, across the sea. I'm basically halfway around the world from them. And, uh, and we have a lot of fun. So hopefully you can join us there. Thank you for joining us on our uh, inaugural Blab. And we're planning on doing these actually every two weeks just before we do the Hangout. So, uh, you know, Come and see us again. Look forward to and, it. And remember, guys, this is it's going to be going into one of Scott's podcasts. So if you're listening to the podcast, make sure you subscribe uh, to all the appropriate tunes. Is it going to be on iTunes? Is this one on iTunes, Scott? I'll, I'll be popping it onto iTunes as well. If you go to Facebook and search Power Podcasters, you can join us. Uh, you can join there, and I'll have all the links at that spot. That's probably the best place. Thank so, you, guys. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.